Okay, we're back here live in uh, Santa Clara. This is the Velocity Conference by O'Reilly Media. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon. The Cube, our flagship program, where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. Uh, we've been uh, whirlwind, we were in Las Vegas for <laughs> all the shows last week, HP Discover, IBM Edge, we're at the Worldwide Developer Conference in San Francisco, at the GE Industrial Cloud, the Internet of Things event yesterday, now we're here with O'Reilly Media at the Velocity Conference, two days live coverage. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Steven Luden is here, he's the chief architect of, of Akamai, focused on site acceleration and security. Steven, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, good to be here. So we heard uh, one of your colleagues up giving a keynote this morning uh, on Akamai I.O. and yep. uh, you guys are obviously focused on you know, some of the big problems in, in, in the web uh, and regarding whether it's routing data or securing data yep. and so forth. So talk about your role and uh, then we'll get into some of those challenges and how they've evolved over time. Sure, at a super high level, Akamai is split into two main focuses. One is around <laughs> delivery of media, video, large files, that sort of stuff, what you think of as a traditional CDN. And the other side is the performance aspect. Think about commerce websites, websites, web delivery, small objects, which is really what um, Velocity here is all about. So my role has been, um, for the past number of years, really working on trying to figure out how to get the bar to go faster and farther when it comes to uh, the sort of smaller object delivery to get to the point where everyone wants to be, which is instant page rendering. Yeah, so you've got a session tomorrow and, and you're going to be talking about performance, particularly from the standpoint of what the user sees, right? Yep. Talk about that a little bit. So tomorrow's session is actually where, where we are, uh, we have Moby Test coming out. I don't want to steal too much uh, thunder from the actual announcement, uh, but it's going to be talking about how the advances we've done over Moby Test, something that we're giving back to the community um, to help with web page tests and um, acceleration of your own properties. So maybe you could talk a little bit about just performance in general. I know you don't want to give away, you know, show too much leg on tomorrow, but talk about why web performance is getting so much more difficult. I mean, obviously complexity is on the rise, but what does that mean? Maybe unpack that a little bit for us. Well, there's a couple of things going on. Um, you know, one would think with, the, with bandwidth getting bigger and bigger and more broadband, you would see a lot, you know, you know, performance would be, that problem would be going away. But what's happening is everyone's expectations are ratcheting up as well. So you look at a website from 93, 94, that's going to that's gonna be an instant render site, but no one wants to go to a website from 93, 94. <laughs> so in order to produce <laughs> the experience that people expect, the, uh, te the, te the technological needs are so huge. We have to deliver more and we have to deliver faster. Now in addition, the variety of networks you have to go over uh, is huge. So for example, we have you know, traditional broadband to the home, that's easy. But that same website needs to go to someone's um, 3G handset as they're on a train traveling to work. So that's where the challenges come in and trying to address those situations and sort of have what we call a situational performance solution is so critical. And you know, this is where you have all the front end optimization, all those things are technologies that come to bear to help deal with that ever changing internet. Steven, yeah, okay. the, oh, go ahead, go ahead, John. The, um, obviously the expectations, you mentioned the expectations. Talk about the um, two areas. Obviously diversity of traffic. I mean obviously traffic's like data, right? It's never going down, it's yep. kind of going up, right? Yep. Yep. And you have issues around you know, borders of certain service providers and networks. You got to deal with policies and different routing capabilities. So there's like network issues. And then there's also just overall traffic diversity, mobile versus web, having certain uh, content formats change based upon the devices. Right. So we had Internet of Things, the edge of the network. So you have a, a mega trend of explosion of, of at the edge, mm -hmm. which is throwing off data and packets in certain warm factors or containers. Yep. And then you got traffic issues. Software-defined networking has completely turned the networking world upside down, yep. east, west, north, south. So you have an explosion in two really mega trends in your world. Right. You know, packet management, policy-based routing management of packets, load balancing, virtualization on networks, and then you got the application edge. Right. How, you, how are you guys making sense of that? I mean, because you're in the middle of it. You're like at 35,000 feet and you got to change out the engine of the airplane at the same time. Right, well, that, that, that's, that's a, it's a great question and it, it, this is why we have a different focus on the very different traffic types now. Um, 
but in the end, it's a lot of the same software and infrastructure delivering both. It's how we go ahead and apply those technologies to the different problem at hand. One example is when it comes to video, you want to figure out how to go ahead and handle a constant bandwidth for a sustained period of time over these uh, you know, less than perfect networks that we've talked about. When it comes to a website, you're talking about a huge burst of traffic that has to get down instantly, otherwise your customers walk. So um, with those two different things, one of the consistent problems is the though the edges of the internet, whether they be origin or uh, consumer, are exploding in size. That central sort of tier one part of the internet isn't growing at pace. Congestion isn't getting better, it's getting worse. And so anything that has to travel through that central point is going to have problems. Now this is where the Akamai idea of having points of presence close to end users, a network hop or two away, is something that's so critical to getting this um, sort of real-time experience that everyone expects these days. So web app guys like Facebook have really done a lot of pioneering work by building their own stuff because they couldn't buy off-the-shelf stuff. Um, but you're also a supplier to them on the network side. What yep. are you guys offering folks that, that are looking to tool up in, in the ops side, that want to be the next Facebook? Well, it might not be that kind of scale, but right. or Etsy, the same, same example. You got, the, you got a kind of a small knit group of people who have actually kicked some butt on the scale side on ops. Right. That are managing a lot of apps, a lot of traffic. What are you guys offering uh, those, those customers that in the traditional IT or mm -hmm. uh, app space? Well, this is, this is where you have to look at um, uh, the content delivery space with two different lenses these days. You have the kind of the old school lens of what it was back in 99, 2000, which was give us your objects, we'll deliver them for you. Then the new school lens is really more about um, how do I get a bit of data from place to place faster without any caching whatsoever, which is what we call acceleration. We got into the acceleration space back in about 2004 or so. So we've actually been doing acceleration longer we've been doing uh, what we call traditional CDN. So when it comes to your IT uh, folks and the ops guys, they have usually two um, uh, uh, tasks at hand. One is they have to go ahead and deliver stuff. It has to be fast, it has to be rapid, it has to be real time. The other part is they have cost considerations that they have to, do, have to figure out. Do I need you know, two boxes to serve this or do you need 2,000? And for them, one of the things that Akhmet comes in is providing incredible offload for anything that is offloadable. Um, we talk about acceleration, we talk about cache, we talk about dynamic content, but in, despite all the dynamic content out there, there's still a huge amount of stuff that is still cacheable. And, uh, because, and, and that's where a, 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 any solution for acceleration needs to both have a cacheable solution as well as a um, pure acceleration, getting bits from A to B faster. Steven, you talked earlier about you know, some of the challenges, you alluded to anyway, the challenges that mobile brings. Yep. Um, we were at GE yesterday, they lost this big event, and talking about the, what they call the industrial internet. How will this internet of things, you know, generally, and then specifically this machine data, which is going to generate you know, many, many petabytes of data, how will that change some of the challenges that, that, that you face? Um, well, well, there, there, are so, there are so many, so, there are so many uh, uh, interesting things to think about there. Uh, you know, one part, and I'll still start with a couple of whole list of problems. First off, every, every one of these things needs a name, an IP, a, a, an address, and uh, we're out of addresses. Uh, so this is where moving to uh, you know, the IPv6 from before is so critical to making this internet of things a reality. Right now, we're in a space where um, we are rushing forward in this direction without really an, a net to catch us. Uh, V6 is still out there right over the horizon. There are a lot of um, people moving towards that direction, but it's going to be some time. Uh, right now, I think Akamai has seen about one or two percent of our traffic is actually over V6, um, which is great, um, but we need to get to a point where that's, you know, one or two percent of our traffic is over V4. You're right. Uh, the other thing around Internet of Things is just the pure uh, connectivity aspect. You know, you know things. This, we're not talking about a thing where there's a Ethernet cable, you know, plugged into the back of your refrigerator or in your car. We're talking about mobile. So the networks themselves are going to get more robust. They're going to get more um, 
uh, a, a solid and reliable. I, liked, I liken it a lot to back in 96, uh, 95, when dial-up was a norm, everyone was like, well, how is this ever going to work because, you know, this isn't, this isn't usable. And sure enough, things changed. The same thing is going to happen on, in the mobile world. Those networks will improve. There will always be a bleeding edge, and people like Akamai will be at the edge of that bleeding edge trying to make it better, but things are going to get better. Yeah, and as you've written, there's a lot can, that can go wrong between point A and, and, and point Indeed. B. Indeed. Uh, all right, so, so what's uh, you know, the announcement tomorrow that uh, we're all eagerly anticipating? What do you what do you see over the horizon? What's sort of next beyond you know that for Akamai? Some of the big challenges that you guys are are tackling. Um, God, there, there are there's so many challenges. Scale is probably the biggest one. Uh, the biggest challenge is, of course, the ones that we don't know about yet. The thing that this industry is so incredible for is. Um, Although a lot of us sit here and talk about what is going to happen six months from now, half the time, more than half the time, we're wrong. It's those surprises that sort of completely catch us by, uh, um, you know, by surprise, uh, that are make it so interesting and fun to be in this space. Give me an example of something that really surprised <coughs> you guys that you responded to, and talk a little bit about how you responded. So, this is going back in time, but I was, truly surprised by the explosion of uh, TLS SSL and people using uh, the encrypted uh, internet. And, th and the reason is not, not because it was a, a good thing, but because it was really, really hard to do that and it's hard to do it well. The whole infrastructure of it is kind of a collaboration that mostly works and it's a, it's a, there's a lot of a cost in it. And so the fact that, you know, Akamai terminates, you know, probably about 20, 30% of our traffic that we do now is over TLS. Uh, so we're terminating all of that traffic for our, for our users. That has been a huge growth that I personally did not expect. Now, one of the things that Akamai has adapted to that is we do what uh, one of called early termination. So when, when you try to negotiate a TLS connection, the handshake, you have to go back and forth many, many times. Very chatty. In, in order to do this, you know, you'll, you'll hear people at this conference especially talking about round trips, round trips, how many round trips. Um, there are two things you can do. You can reduce round trips, or you can make those round trips really, really short. So with early termination, what Akamai is doing is we're getting the handshake to terminate very close to the end user, so then rather than 100, 150 millisecond round trips, you're talking about 15 millisecond round trips, and so they just, uh, you just zip through them very quickly. Awesome. Okay, we got a break. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Obviously, Akamai, storied history, one of the most successful web, early web companies. Um, and then just <coughs> content routing is, is evolving. It's never going to go away. It's kind of like data. David, I always joke about storage. You know, it's like the industry that just never dies because no one, we need to store more and more things, just like your business traffic and you're evolving. Congratulations on your success there. And uh, app, app acceleration, app delivery is not going away, certainly with mobile. Yep. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, Steve. We appreciate it. We'll be right back with our next guest right after this short break. <laughs>